greatest supercross riders in the world. Race not for money. Or AMA Supercross is next on CBS Sports Spectacular. Executed here in St. Louis. Well, let's head down to the floor of the stadium where our Aaron Bates has caught up to Kevin Windham. Thanks, Ralph. Well, tonight's race, possibly one of the most pivotal races of the season, and the pressure is on more than ever before for a championship that has eluded his entire Supercross career. Kevin, you're sitting 16 points back, three races to go, and our very own Jeff Emick just said it's time for you to step up your game, get out of your comfort zone, and stop riding so safely, and it's about time to take some more wins. Do you agree with that? Well, I tell you, I couldn't agree with Pro more. You know, it's uh, it's going to be about to start. Who knows what Chad's doing, how, how bad his injury is. I'm tired of even worrying about what i got to do right now. And clearly, that's uh, get out of the gate better and uh, win some of these races. Kevin Windham, he's always been a bridesmaid, never a bride. But this championship's not over until it's over. All right, Aaron, thanks for that progressive pre-race report. Now, Jeff, let's talk about the other side of this championship battle and the Australian Chad Reed. He's injured. How does he fight his way through to this championship? Well, if history has taught us anything, is Chad Reed can't ride through the pain. Last week was a phenomenal ride to get a 12. This week, I think with a little bit of rehab and everything, he's going to be a little stronger. But he's going to have to keep winning these races. It's going to be, he is going to be getting a great start for Chad Reed here tonight. Well, you saw Reed being introduced to the crowd here in St. Louis. We had a chance to catch up with him earlier in the day to find out how he rehabilitated his body preparing for this week's competition. Yeah, just try to get the swelling down, try to uh, try to take the pain down. You know, that's a big uh, priority right now. And 
and then just try to try to get my lungs better. You know, a lot of the things that that I need to do for my shoulder is is minimized because of my because of my lungs. So, uh, you know, just try to get out here. We got three races to go and 16 points, and and at this point, I'd, I'll take that. And uh, it's gonna be a tough weekend, but we have a great track, and I'm excited to get out there and ride. Uh, it's gonna hurt, but I think it'll be fun. So Chad Reed and Kevin Windham, the championship is on the line, and it all begins when we drop the gate on the heat races, coming up next on CBS. CBS Sports Spectacular coverage of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross is sponsored by Toyota, moving forward. Fueled by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. Mahalo, Hawaii. For inviting KGMB9 into your home for the last 55 years. Chad Reed and Kevin Windham, what a year. Unbelievable competition between these two great racers as they work their way towards the 2008 championship. Here's our MMI Road to the Main, what you're gonna see, two heat races, eight laps each, top nine events straight to the main. There will be a last chance qualifier. It's only six laps, top two riders out of that. Fill out our 20 rider, 20 lap main event here in St. Louis. Let's head down to the starting area. Here's Aaron. Well, guys, one thing I can tell you about St. Louis, the tension here is so thick in the air that you can feel it. You've got both of your title contenders lined up behind me, ready to get this heat race up and going. Kevin Windham having the fastest overall practice today. And Chad Reed, well, he sat out second practice and tried to heal up his shoulder and get himself prepared for this heat race exactly. The tension is running high. We're going to see what's in store for tonight's main event. Jeff, you and I talked to both of those riders. The intensity was incredible as they were preparing for today. And both riders had the same comment. Three races to go. Here's our Thor starting lineup scrolling across the top of the screen. Those are the riders in this heat. Nine of them will transfer straight on to the main. Just incredible that we have both these riders in the same qualifying heat here. Chad Reed did not ride the second round of qualifying practice. Has that injured shoulder. Still some problems with his lungs. He's saving it for these 28 laps here tonight. You saw the 30-second board is up in the air. She'll turn the board sideways, head for the sidelines, and we'll be racing. Justin Brayton, not necessarily who anybody would have picked for the whole shot out of this heat. Yeah, definitely a uh, great start for him on the KTM. Which means it wasn't a good start for our two championship contenders who are deep in the field. And Here they side come by side. side by side, bar to bar, deep in the field. That's Heath Boss on the number 13. You see Wyndham on the red 14, the Honda, and on that blue Yamaha number 22 is Chad Reed, and they're side by side through the whoops. Now Wyndham trying to pull away a little bit. That's Wyndham, I think he's moved up to around eighth right now. We'll see as they cross the stripe. And buried in the pack, both these riders great starters, and in a heat race to be that far back. And they can't afford any mistakes back here, Jeff, because the top nine transfer straight to the main. So they both want to get straight out of this heat and onto the main. This is also going to hurt them in their game picks for the main event. Unless they can work themselves to the front of the pack here, both these riders very capable of that. And with this only being eight left, boy, there's not a lot of time to waste. Definitely not. This heat race is going to fly by eight laps, roughly 54-second lap times. We'll take a check because this is going to be key here as this race goes on. Oh, there goes Wyndham around the outside. That's the time. That's Travis Preston on that green Kawasaki that he's trying to pass. And here's the battle for the lead. 
That's Josh Hill on that blue number 40. Oh, and contact a little bit there in the corner. Yeah, Hill was a little bit late to try to make a uh, make a block pass like that, but he's not late this lap or this time. Here he is on the inside, taking the lead away from Brayton. Josh Hill, the winner in the Metrodome in Minneapolis earlier this year, his first career Supercross win. Now we go back to the deeper in the field as we watch Chad Reed trying to get past Travis Preston, and he does so. And that's, I believe that's Paul Carpenter on the 42 that he's trying to get around next. Paul Carpenter, the top privateer of the se of this season, leading the privateer points. Up there mixing it up with our points leader for the overall championship. And I'm telling you, a Supercross championship is the crown jewel in all of dirt bike racing. And Chad Reed, he's close, but he ain't there yet. Just three pivotal races to go. Jeff, you've won a lot of races. You've won a lot of titles in your racing career. Supercross champion, one of them. How did that stack up with everything else you've won? Well, uh, like I said, it's the crown jewel. And uh, there's just uh, so much emphasis on this championship. The time that I was there was very tough to win them because Jeremy McGrath won seven during the time that I was racing, so hard to come by. That's why it's so important. McGrath nicknamed the king of Supercross after winning so many of the championships. Chad Reed won one back in 2004. He's open in 2008. He can get his second. Josh Hill leads in the heat. Take CBS Sports with you wherever you go. Get live scores and stats across all sports and watch highlights from this event. Text SCORE to 99888 or go to mobile.cbssports.com. Josh Hill on the Yamaha number 40 leads in his heat race here in the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. This Yamaha rider picking up his career first win in the Metrodome in Minneapolis earlier this year. Hoping to get his fourth heat race victory of the season if he can hang on for another lap and a half. Absolutely dominating this heat race out front, just putting in perfect laps, best times of 53.7. Extremely fast, just a little bit off the fastest qualifying time. But in the heat race here, as the track starts to deteriorate, you can see these ruts up high there in the turns. As the night goes on, the track's gonna get a little bit slower, actually. And with all the focus on Reed and Whittem, this could be a great opportunity for a rider like Hill or Millsaps to come through and steal another victory. Steal the show, they call that, yep. Final lap, one to go here in the heat. Kevin Windham has worked his way up to second place after a horrible start. This will help Windham out tremendously in his gate pick for the main event. Oh, definitely. Gate pick is going to be key because Windham, he's been strong, but track position was his downfall last week. I'm telling you, if Kevin Windham can get out front on, on the start, I think he can take this win. Chad Reed has battled his way up to fifth. We'll see if he can improve as they come to the line here on this final lap. Only one other rider outside of Josh Hill has gotten down to the 53-second range in this heat, and that would be Kevin Windham. So the 14 has found his speed once he got rolling. A 53-1, that's the fastest lap of the night. Josh Hill, however, is looking to stand on the top step of the podium. This very likable young rider on the factory Yamaha wins the heat here in St. Louis. A quick look at our Toyota truck results page shows that Josh Hill's the winner, but Kevin Windham and Chad Reed, after some terrible starts, battled their way into the top five, which will help them as they go to their gate picks into tonight's main event. Jason Thomas will be the last in the top nine out of this heat. Here's Aaron. Three heat race wins in a row for Josh Hill. He's got these heat rates mastered. Josh, you're one of the guys that's outside the drama of the title contention. Do you think that that could be a good factor for you to steal tonight's show? Yeah, I mean, Chad's hurt. Kevin's, you know, definitely got a lot of pressure. So I just got to get out there and, you know, for my for the Omaha, I got to try to get out there and win this and give uh, give Chad some points if he's not all the way able. What would it mean to you to take home another win this season? Another good start. And then, uh, you know, just all my training with Ryan Hughes will pay off and all the hard work that uh, my team, the Omaha, Bridgestone, Parts Unlimited, and uh, Monster have been helping me out with. Josh Hale, the only guy out here that claims he's still having fun. Here's a look at our Toyota moving forward schedule of upcoming races. 
You can see the Seattle rounds and the Las Vegas rounds on our friends over at Speed. Check your local listings for those shows. Of course, CBS will be back with our season in review, May 4th, noon Eastern time. And what a year it's been. We'll wrap it all for you on May 4th. We'll be right back for more racing from here in St. Louis after this. May 3rd, 2008, the most anticipated race of the season returns to the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas. Monster Energy AMA Supercross, the finals. Which rider will take the crown this year? Witness the history for yourself live in Sin City and stay where the stars stay with preferred rates for Supercross fans at Planet Hollywood. Monster Energy AMA Supercross, the finals. May 3rd, 2008, only at Sam Boyd Stadium, Las Vegas. Fantastic free race ceremonies, a big part of each and every round of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series as it crisscrosses the country. You know, there's some 500 truckloads of dirt brought into these big stadiums each week. Right now, the KTM Juniors are out taking advantage of it, having a lot of fun on all these huge dirt piles. So how do they move all that dirt around and get these tracks built? Our Aaron Bates found out earlier today. Here I am standing with Ryan Foley, the VP of Rental Services of Foley Cat. Ryan, first off, tell us about your involvement with Supercross. Well, not only being a big fan of Supercross, I also love to ride as well. And from coming over the races over a number of years, started meeting some of the key people that are responsible for building these tracks. And we started kicking around some ideas on how the cat rental stores could form a relationship with Supercross. Some of those ideas came to fruition, and here we are today. Now, how did Cat become the official provider for equipment for Supercross? Well, it's no big secret at Caterpillar that we're big fans of motorsports. This really is a natural fit for us. Our customers love it, our employees love it, so we're happy to be here. And lastly, why was it that Cat decided to choose Supercross as a sport to be involved in? Well, Cat has seen significant growth year over year, and you can't grow your business without growing your people. So this demographic really made sense for us. So we're out here, it's kind of twofold. We're talking to a younger generation, new group of people about some of the benefits a career at Caterpillar could provide someone. And then also we're able to increase our awareness with the cat rental stores for the, for the people that come out here to this event. Cat, the official equipment provider of Supercross. Big crowd on hand here tonight, the Edward Jones Dome taking in all the action as Supercross has made its way into St. Louis this week. Let's show you our Mastercraft heat highlights now. Riding, but Millsap's coming out on the final end of it. On the right side of it, he takes the checkered flag. Here's the lead of the results out of that heat race. Davey Millsaps takes the win, but the shocker is going to be the names that had transfer positions that are not going on straight to the main, but instead going to the last chance qualifier by Dan Reardon and Tim Ferry. However, Davey Millsaps, he's on the top step of the podium and with our Aaron Bates. A little game of cat and mouse taking place between Davey Millsaps and Nick Wade. Davey, some tempers are fired up out there. Take us through the aggressive pass. Oh, you know, uh, I crashed uh, third lap or something like that, and, you know, I caught back up to Nick, and he just kept roadblocking me and just kept going all over track. But, you know, he was running a good race. I just came in the corner underneath of him, and he cut down too hard, and we hit. But, you know, I didn't mean to take him out. I just mean to come underneath of him. Is tonight's track one of those tracks that are going to be easy to make a pass on? It's not easy at all because, you know, you got all those tight corners. You got to come into them really tight so you had no room underneath of them, but it's going to be a fun race for sure. Here's a look at the Yamaha results page from our last chance qualifier is David Villeman and Heath Voss will be the final two transfer riders out of the LCQ into the main. But what about the spectacular crash that Ryan Clark had on the last lap? He goes flying off the berm and in a shower of sparks he slides right under the grandstand. Well, Clark got up and with a little help from the Astros medical crew, he made his way back to the pit area. 
So it's time now for the main event. Getting set to get underway here in St. Louis with Wyndham and Reed for the Kickers. looking down onto the Edward Jones Dome, normally the home of the National Football League St. Louis Rams. Tonight, it's Monster Energy AMA Supercross, and we're getting ready for the main event. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Sheen alongside Jeff Emig once again. We've seen Chad Reed and Kevin Windham in their heat races, so how do you think they're going to stack up in the main? Well, I think Kevin Windham is very capable of winning the main event. Chad Reed, though, I'm not so convinced. I don't, I'm not convinced that his shoulder or his injured lungs can make it a full 20 laps and even finish up as high as a fifth place. So there's a lot of spoilers that can get in between Wyndham and Reed or even ahead of Wyndham and take those points. Could it be Josh Hill, Davey Millsap? Both these riders are very strong here tonight. Jeff, let's take a look at the MX versus ATV untamed track map. Well, parts of the track, the whoops are going to get a little bit one line. I think these 180 turns right here, there's four of them. A lot of block passing going to go on. But I think the key to tonight's main event and the rest of this championship is going to be the first turn area right here. Well, let's show you our up close as we get set for the main event. Our Monster Energy up close will be 20 laps. We've got 21 riders in the gate, one rider taking a provisional. At stake, there's 25 points for the winner. And of course, Jeff, you talked about that first corner. Here's a good look at it from the ceiling. Yeah, all night long, the outside has actually had the ability to sweep around. They can hold it on to like here. If you go down the inside line, you, you have to shut off about here and try to hold the tight line. Inside guys have to push wide and close that out, but that's gonna allow the guys that are just behind them on the inside to try to sneak by, get the progressive hole shots. So there are the 21 riders lined up in the gate. As you see our Monster Energy starting lineup, Tim Ferry's the one rider who took the provisional. There's a good look at Kevin Windham. Remember, he trails Reed by 16 points. I'm looking for Kevin Windham to have a breakout main event. He needs to go absolutely crazy in this main, and from wherever he starts, he needs to ride to the checkered flag with just fury in his eyes. How about Chad Reed? Chad Reed needs to grit it out, no mistakes. Here we go, main event time in St. Louis. Negotiated their way through and picked their way through. Got a little lucky with the top two riders. Let's see if Chad Reed, if these injuries to his shoulder and lungs, if he can withstand the 20 grueling laps that the Supercross here in the Edward Jones Dome is going to dish out to him. And what sort of ride will Kevin Windham put in? Jeff, every athlete has always said that adrenaline is the best elixir for pain. If you need a pain medication, boy, leading a race when the championship's on the line has got to make all that go away. Well, Chad Reed has to feel great right now as opposed to last week. Chad Reed can use that elixir of the, the thought of being champion again to right. propel him through. Here comes oh. Wyndham. Battling up the long side of the 14. Trying to take that lead away. These riders in the 53-second lap time range 
That's very fast last for Chad Reed, faster than what he turned in his qualifying heat race. The gritty Australian rider, the 2004 series champion, Chad Reed out front. Kevin Windham has never won the championship in Supercross. He's had a spectacular career and a tremendous season. Winning the highly coveted round at Daytona. But boy, would he love to be a champion before he retires. Well, Chad Reed putting on a great ride here. Kevin Windham there just behind him. Even if Wyndham was to go by right now, that's only a three-point gap. Chad Reed not giving up on this, though. He is racing forward and doing what he knows how to do, is to stay focused. What an incredible ride this would be if 16 laps from now, Chad Reed ends up being the winner. Boy, would that be a statement after the horrendous crash that he had last week. One of the most violent wrecks we've seen in this season, with Chad Reed just getting Flip onto his back, comes crashing down onto the floor of Ford Field only a week ago in Detroit. And now here he is leading in St. Louis. And not only leading, Ralph, he just turned a 52.4. That's the only lap that we've seen all day with the rider in the 52 second uh, range. And Wyndham now really putting on the pressure. He's, He's got the lead. He's got him. Kevin Wyndham takes the lead over in St. Louis. Now can he stretch that out? Remember, all that Wyndham can do is go win the races. He can't separate himself or add any other points to this. He can only win the race. Look at the replay here. Watch how Chad Reed takes the high line, Wyndham low line, it just, just really accelerates down that double, just rides around the outside. So Wyndham on the Honda, out front. And he, too, into the 52-second range. That is absolutely flying. And look, Chad Reed's not giving up at all, and he could very well just, just let Kevin go. Take the second. Jeff, you said in order for Kevin Windham to win this championship, he's got to get outside of his comfort zone. Do you think he's done that by showing that he can get down to that 52-second range? Most definitely. Having Chad Reed out front, riding that well, and he said, I can beat it. I can beat Chad. He will have picked up three more points as Wyndham closes the gap to 13 if they stay this way and finish one and two. Behind them is Andrew Short, Tommy Hahn, and Nathan Ramsey, who happens to be Reed's teammate. Nathan sits back in fifth. What Wyndham needs now is not only to win, but to get a couple of his other riders to move in front of Reed. Most definitely. I don't look for it. Chad Reed is a very smart, a very strong rider. He knows what he has to do at this point. Aaron, Tim Ferry has uh, struggled. He had to take a provisional just to get into this main. That's absolutely right, Ralph. Tonight's night was not the night for Tim Ferry. Tim, take us through what exactly took place. Well, I just uh, had a little crash in the heat race, and uh, outside gate pick, I used the provisional. I came in hot, and I think it was maybe Nick, and I tried to straighten it back up, and it was too late, a high side of the berm, and just knocked the wind out of me, and I banged my bike up too much to finish. Big, big group, we'll see you next weekend in Seattle. All right, sounds good. That was a big hit for Ferry. A violent crash there. You've seen on the replay how he got high-sided to the inside and just got slammed into the first turn berm. He's going to feel that one tomorrow. Wyndham is now two and a half seconds in front of Reed. Maybe a bigger story is the fact that Andrew Short is about four seconds behind Chad Reed, and that's what Kevin Wyndham needs to change. He needs his teammate, Andrew Short, to get in front of Reed. Yeah, he needs uh, some other Hondas and red bikes to get in there and steal some points. I'm telling you, if Chad Reed ends up second, or even inside the top five tonight, I'm gonna say that was an awesome ride. What a great recovery. Let's go back and take a look at the whole shot replay as this one got underway here in St. Louis. And you can take a look at here on the replay to see who gets the whole shot, but it might be even more exciting to watch Tim Ferry on the outside. Watch Tim Ferry here on the lower part of your screen really get a drive. Kelly Smith here has the line the whole time. And top right of your screen, you see a couple of riders going off, but Kelly Smith. Great start. Too bad he couldn't hold it any longer than that lap. Wyndham sailing over the big triple, some 65 feet from peak to peak. 
Triple jumps are the standard in Supercross. Great for airtime. Sometimes they're a little more difficult than others. They have a nice run in, make it nice and easy. This is a little triple, three jumps in a row here. There's Reed, he sits in second. Here's Andrew Short, number 29 Honda rider. He's closed in on Reed. The gap between Reed and Wyndham is now 3.3 seconds. But Short, you can see it, he's closed in a little bit. He's been about a half second quicker than Reed on the last couple of laps, Jeff. So maybe that adrenaline wearing off a little bit on Reed as we approach the halfway point. Well, we're gonna see here late in this moto, we'll see just how strong Chad Reed's body is. Like I said, the grueling track here tonight in St. Louis and what's not working for Wyndham and working on Reed's side is a rider like Tim Ferry, who was second last week, down off the start. Bill Saps, who won last week, down on the first lap. So these are the spoilers that we talked about. As Josh Hill, he's setting in 19th right now. These are the riders that Wyndham was hoping to get in between. And Millsaps is charging up through the field. He's just gotten around Paul Carpenter for eighth. As Carpenter gets into a tough block, oh, nice and the 42 save. has troubles as he tries to reel back in Davey Millsaps. That's a 917 of Eric Sorby now, who's working his way up into the top 10. Kevin Windham continues to lead here in the Edward Jones Dome. We're halfway through the main event in St. Louis as this championship chase continues here in St. Louis. Welcome back to Monster Energy AMA Supercross, the main event halfway completed here in the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Kevin Windham won here in 1998. And now, 10 years later, he's on his way to another victory here in St. Louis. And what a big victory it would be for Wyndham. It would be his third of the season with wins coming in Houston's Reliance Stadium, basically his home race, and also inside the famed Daytona International Speedway. And what this does for Kevin, confidence booster all the way. This is exactly what Kevin Windham needs. Not as many points as he needs, but it's a good recipe right now for the end of this series. Maybe a little momentum going in Windham's uh, uh, direction here. And there's going to be two races left in the championship after this. Anything can happen, as we've seen this year in Supercross all around in our lights competitions, everything. Anything can happen. At the same time, Jeff, for Chad Reed, who sits in second, you got to go, hey, I'm weathering what is really a pretty big storm. With the injuries and the fast pace of Kevin Windham, Reed could go out of here with second and only lose just a handful of points. Yeah, this will be an incredible ride for Chad Reed. If he stays in second place, that's, uh, that's gonna be uh, exactly what he needed to do. He doesn't have to win right now. He's got that points cushion that he earned earlier in the season by winning strings of races. Okay, and then he's gonna count on that points cushion to help propel him to the championship over a surging Kevin Windham. Windham working his way through traffic. And you know, Jeff, I think it was kind of interesting seeing Kevin down during rider walk around earlier this morning. You and I both commented after talking to him that he seemed a little bit more intense, a little bit tighter than we have used to seeing him. And he told me earlier this year, he doesn't usually like riding when he's tense and then tight like that. But boy, he's really battled through it tonight. Yeah, he definitely has. It's, uh, it's been a fantastic ride. I, Kevin Windham tonight has been as focused as, as what I've ever seen him. He's very aware of the point situation. He's very aware that he is this close to the Supercross Championship. He commented, you know, he doesn't want to lose this thing by two points. You know, if he gets that close, he wants to win it. Watch Kevin Windham through this section, Jeff. Kevin doubles out, stays to the inside, and C bounces this little triple in here, and then cuts down. Kevin drawing perfect lines, triples there also. Let's take a look at Chad Reed as he goes through the same section. So over that double, through the whoops, is very conservative, just kind of jumping through, not a lot of momentum. Takes the inside line here. Draws the exact same lines. That's why their lap times are fairly close right now. Six laps to go. And Jeff, you mentioned seat bouncing. What is that? Seat bouncing right here. Kevin Wyndham sitting on the seat and jumping. 
applying the throttle and compressing the rear suspension. This is one of those tracks where you really do that. You sit down as you go through the work and through the ruts. What Reed right there sitting on the seat when he jumps. Jeff, there was a very interesting story that flew all over the internet through all the different sites that cover Supercross about Chad Reed going out go-kart racing this week after those big injury in Detroit and everybody came to St. Louis wondering how could he possibly do that? Well, I asked Chad about that this morning and he got a big chuckle out of it and he said, you know, I was there, but it wasn't me. He said one of my buddies registered under the name of Chad Reed and went out and set the quickest time. So everybody thought it was me. He goes, at first I thought it was kind of cool because I had quick time without even doing it, but then I saw everything on the internet and I thought, oh boy, have I ever opened up a can of worms with this one? Well, he, he, he definitely has and you know, people have questioned the severity of his injuries. Only, only Chad Reed knows that. Only Chad Reed knows the extent of the pain that he's had a ride through, and he's very determined on winning this championship. Jeff, it's a very secretive society here in Supercross when it comes to things like injuries. People don't want to let the others know. They don't want to let any blood in the water to let the shark start circling. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to show any weakness. But also in Chad's case, you know, he wants to. Maybe it's this deal where he's playing the sight game. He wants everybody to think that he's more injured than what he is. One way or the other, he's a very gritty rider, and he's holding on to his championship hopes here tonight with a second place run behind this man who has done what he's had to do, and that's get uncomfortable. And I find that interesting, Jeff, because most athletes will tell you they want to get in the zone. They want to find a comfortable place, and that's when they excel. But to win in Supercross, you actually have to get uncomfortable. Well, the thing about Kevin Windham is, is uh, he could get out of his comfort zone, but because of his riding style, we, you know, you know, an experienced expert like myself might not even notice that. So we really see it in the finish here, and he's had a great ride. Some other riders putting in some great rides tonight. One of those is Nathan Ramsey. And Chad's Tommy Hahn teammate. right here. Yeah. This would be a fourth place finish for Ramsey, and it would be his season's best. To date, his best run was a fifth at Atlanta. Quite a few rounds back, all the way back in round number eight. Tommy Hahn on the 32, battling right there with him. And for Tommy, this would be his best finish. His best so far was a fifth in Minneapolis. Yeah, he would tie that. This is a great re great ride for Hahn, who is uh, currently involved in the West Coast Lights Championship, moonlighting here on the 450, riding the, the uh, 450 class on the East, gaining some experience. He'll be jumping up to this class for next year. Tavy Millsaps on the 118 machine. He started things off with a great run tonight in his heat race. Struggled in the opening lap of this one. He sits in six right now behind the 32 of Hahn. Hahn putting in a great ride here. There's Davey. Davey. Davey having to recover from what looked like a great start for him. Get, get past Kelly Smith, go win the race again, but it was not to be hit up off the track. He's had to battle through that. Let's go back and show you what happened to Davey as this race got underway. Keep in mind, there's Kelly Smith with the lead here in the orange gear, and Millsaps just clips him. And look at Smith go up over the bars, and look at the bike. They call that whiskey throttle, and that bike just took off on him. So unfortunate for both riders who had first and second going. Whew, that was a tough one to take. Well, Davey Millsaps, Aaron, is up to six, trying to catch Hahn for fifth. That's right, Ralph. Well, today, Davey Millsaps, he made some big changes. What they did, they came out, they raced first practice. They were unsatisfied with the bike's performance. Carlos, his mechanic, took the bike back to the pits. They put a whole new motor in it, a brand new chassis on it. They pretty much did all the tweaks and modifications that they could do for him to come out swinging here tonight. Unfortunate evening for Davey Millsaps. Off to the bad start. Two wins this year at Atlanta at his home race and in Detroit. Millsaps living down in Florida now. Mississippi native right here, though. Kevin Windham putting on a phenomenal ride. One lap to go. This has got to be very satisfying for him. He cannot be disappointed if Chad Reed finished second. Kevin can only focus on what he can do and what he can do to change the outcome of this championship. He said he can't be disappointed if Chad Reed goes out there and he doesn't make, make up uh, the whole 16 points in one race. But gaining three is better than losing three. And he starts to salute the crowd here in St. Louis. Kevin Windham knew what he had to do, and that was come out and win. 
He got out of that comfort zone and did just that. Working his way around the final few jumps to final few corners. He's got Villeman and Nick Wayne right behind him, however. They're battling over 11th, and Kevin Windham has won in St. Louis to close the gap a little bit more on Chad Reed, who fights his way through some incredible pain to finish second here in the Edward Jones Dome. His second career win here in St. Louis, the first one coming some 10 years ago, but Kevin Windham is on the top step of the podium once again in St. Louis. We'll be right back to talk to him after this. Sports spectacular coverage of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross is sponsored by Suzuki and the all new RMZ 450. Ride the revolution. Toyota moving forward. And by Yamaha. Nobody's more in tune with motorsports than Yamaha. Kevin Windham had to win here tonight in the Edward Jones Dome, and that's exactly what he did. As you take a look at the results, he is at the top. Of the results page, our Suzuki results page shows Kevin Windham finishing just in front of Chad Reed. So the championship will get a little bit tighter. A couple of other guys having some very good runs tonight, including Reed's teammate, Nathan Ramsey. Definitely, and uh, Bill Sapp's working his way up there inside the top 10. That was a great recovery for him. Well, let's meet Kevin Windham. He's standing by with Aaron. Well, Kevin Windham did exactly what he set out to do this evening, and that was to get outside of your comfort zone. Kevin, first off, take us through the past. What happened with Chad? Uh, I don't know. I can't even remember getting around him. <laughs> I think I just barreled through the whoops, and uh, yeah, I knew he was going to be timid. I can't believe he's riding as well as he, uh, well as he is. But uh, you know, I, I wanted to put myself in position. I felt like I was there. I knew he'd be riding timid, and uh, he did what he needed to do to keep some points. But I, I tell you what, I wanted to get one of those patented uh, fro hole shots of the uh, early '90s. That old guy, but. Uh, it didn't work, but I at least put myself in a position to uh, get the win tonight. The Torque Racing Fields Hino's running great. DVS, Dunlop, uh, Amsoil, uh, all the guys. Plant Fitness has been a great run, and uh, I'm glad to get another win under my belt. Wish we could have made more points, but it just wasn't in the cards. Now, third victory of the season. What does this do for your championship hopes with two rounds left to go? It keeps them alive, you know, and uh, we went to Detroit looking pretty grim, and uh, here we are today. I don't even know what, 13 back, so anything can happen. That's what we love about uh, Supercross. It's, it's been a wild series, and I'm just thankful to be in the position I'm in right now. It's, uh, it's been a long time since I've been in this position, and I've been riding as well as I am. And, and that, that alone feels, feels good, but the closer I get, the hungrier I am. Kevin Windham, he won back here in 98, and he did just so again a decade later tonight. Jeff, did he call you old? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but he also called me out for the great hole shots. He'd still have to call you champion, too. Well, the road to Vegas. This title will be decided when we get to Sam Boyd Stadium in May. Sure, hope you can join us there. It's going to be a wild championship finale as we make our way to Las Vegas. That first weekend in May, will it be Chad Reed or Kevin Windham? Only 13 points separating the two as we make our way towards Las Vegas. But it'll be Seattle next. But first, we go back down to Aaron. Well, Chad Reed is still fighting the pain. You can see it in his face, Chad. It looks as though you kind of your adrenaline may have ran out a little bit tonight. Tell us what went down. I uh, just try to get the best out possible and and then just uh, try to put clean laps together. I really struggled in the whoops. I couldn't come in and it was I was sketchy and I didn't want to go down and that was that was the one my one weakest in the whole track and uh, you know basically just like coming by and try to ride for second and you know I came into this thing and I was fired up. You know I'm not happy with the way things are going and uh, I feel like I'm keeping these guys in the championship and I'm not going to let it go, you know, and it doesn't matter how much pain I'm in, I'm going to ride as hard as I possibly can. And I want to thank all my guys at Sam Wynwell, Yamaha, Fusion, Thor Parts Unlimited, because those guys, uh, the guys are strong, man. They're there every week and we're hurting, but they're there to back me. And uh, whew, it's, uh, we go into Seattle. I didn't really want to, uh, you know, give any points up, but it is what it is. Thanks. CBS Sports coverage of Monster Energy AMA Supercross continues Sunday, May 4th at noon Eastern with the year in review. 
Love is on the air on KGMB9 with our special hour-long Back to Romance. Watch your favorite singers perform some of the greatest love songs of all time. Plus, meet Hawaii's most romantic men. It's Back to Romance, Monday at 9 on KGMB9. You're watching KGMB9, Honolulu, Hawaii's severe weather station. For Jeff Emig and Aaron Bates, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from St. Louis, where Kevin Windham is your winner.